Hi everyone, it's Howard here from Mafdel, and today I'm going to be introducing you to the Mafdel overlap system. And what the overlap system is, it's a method of joining this style of belt. Um, you can see that it's got two mysterious yellow dots there on the end. Well, what in fact those are is aramide or Kevlar cords which run the length of the belt. And you can in fact, if you want to, because they're aramide, you can actually butt weld these together without having to drill, but it doesn't give you the optimum strength. And what we've done is produced a system where you actually overlap the two uh, cords inside, which produces an immensely strong join where the cords actually run, they sit alongside each other. And in fact, some people say that the joint is stronger than the actual material itself, but it means that you've got a joint which is just as flexible, but as I said, immensely strong. So how do you join these belts together using the overlap system? Well, I shall show you. We use this tool here, which is the Mafdel J150. It's made by us in France. Um, it does the whole range of reinforced belts, V-belts, covered V-belts, round belts and everything. And all you have to do is to replace these little molds here to suit whichever material it is that you're uh, going to join. Made of steel, so it's incredibly robust. And in fact, if it falls off the bench, the worst that will happen is put a hole in the floor. Um, even if it did bend one of these, um, it's all easily repairable. There are some on the market which are made of plastic, but what happens to those if they do fall off the bench or get mistreated, they end up shattering and you end up without the means of joining your belts. So the complementary part of that, which forms the other part of the kit, is this. This is the MC150, um, a relatively new iron. Uh, only a couple of years old, uh, has three distinct advantages over many of the other irons in the market. One, it's got a set of feet, so it can sit on them, uh, which means that you're not melting anything with your blade. Uh, the other advantage is that within the body, you've got sophisticated electronics, which maintains the blade at the optimum temperature. So if you're in a, a shed, for instance, with a, a draft, it means that it's compensated for by the electronics. It means you end up with a perfect uh, jointing temperature. And then the big one is that it heats up and gets up to temperature in two minutes. That's all. Not 10 minutes or 15 minutes like the older irons. Two minutes. So you can, uh, I don't need to emphasize the advantage of that in a, a production environment. So. Let's go and have a look and see how it all works together. Okay, here we are at the bench. Um, you can see we've got our MC150, our flat-faced side cutters, our material, shears, Allen key, uh, J150, craft knife, and just as importantly, a rag for wiping the blade afterwards. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to calibrate the J150. In other words, make sure everything's lined up and you're not trying to join things where, you know, the, the jigs, for example, are out of line. So what we do is we put a piece of material into the tool itself. We clamp it, clamp it shut and tighten it up until you can see that there. It's in there and it's a perfect circle. Now on this, you'll also see that there's a, a little sliding pointer and there's a line. I don't know whether you can actually see that line, but you'll have to take my word for it. There's a line there. Okay. So what we need to do is you'll notice um, that uh, these are separate to the tool. So when you change them, they obviously become displaced. So what you have to do is make sure that these line up properly and they're not uh, sort of crooked with each other. So you tighten the one side, which is that one, that one's tight. So what we'll do, now we've got this in, we know that that's aligned, and we'll just tighten that up like that, and tighten that up like that. So we know now that they're in line. And then finally, with our little sliding pointer, 
we need to make sure that we end the melt and when the iron is out uh, the um, adjustment in the right place and that's what this pointer is for because this gives you a perfect circle so when that's lined up you can see again you can see that's in there and we'll just make sure that that's in the center and then we'll tighten that up so that tool now is calibrating it's ready to weld a belt okay so we can take we can open it back up you'll notice that there are little chamfers here 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 and here and you'll also notice on the end of the blade that that's um, angled as well now those angles match the angles in the tool so what you have to do just to make life easy for yourself is you have to just cut the, you don't have to do it but it, it makes it easier if you do you have to cut the end of the belt just so it matches that chamfer there so what we'll do we'll give that just that little bit of a like that and then we put that in and when you're putting it in you leave it protruding about five five up six millimeters tighten that up like so nice and tight okay and then we do a similar thing from the other end this is the other end. we have to imagine that this is the belt coming around here and we have to do that again there and put a little bit of a little bit of a chamfer on there as I said just to make things just to make life just easy for ourselves Again, we put it in and we let it protrude about six millimeters. You'll see, you'll see now by how much. And it just means that it just makes, when the blade goes in with its angles, it's not catching on the corners of the belt, but you can see, you can see that now in place. Okay, so we're ready. Now, before we start the melt, the idea is that when we put the blade in, and we start to wind this here, that the pointer, the first pointer, keeps going and going and going until you're just about a millimeter shy of that line. Now, some they'll tell you that they should line up, but I find the best results is if you just leave it sh a millimeter shy and then iron out and then drive it the rest of the way and you end up with that belt really being forced together. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to ready to go on this. All that's tight. Uh, your iron, it can go in either way. It doesn't matter which way it goes in. We'll put it in this way. And then close it up. And then you start, you can, you'll hear it hissing and there we are. And we're melting. I don't know whether you can see that there. Here, certainly hear it and you keep going and going and going keep melting and melting at a fairly brisk rate you don't have to go rushing through it just as it melts just keep going and going watching this line here and remembering that it's about a millimeter before you get to the line nice and gentle keep going keep going keep going see we're coming up we're probably about four millimeters three millimeters you don't as I said you don't want the pointer to end up on the line because there's a I like to drive it home so we're just about there now okay spin that back iron out together and then drive now you can see I've driven that together and that's nice and tight and it's just as tight as I can get it and the lines are lined up so that's us there now when you're actually doing a belt live a proper belt in the factory because there's some weight to the belt pulling I always say that you should leave it about four or five minutes just to cool down sufficiently so when you take it out of the the tool that it doesn't pull on it but because this is a demonstration there's no weight at all on the um, on the belt so we can just undo it now the sequence of undoing it don't do that first because if you do it means it's still clamped here and there's a tendency if that joint is still warm it could pull it apart so you do the little clamps here first you can 
see. It's awkward this because it's I'm a sort of a funny angle I could do with the camera actually being over there. And then once that's uh, I'm done, spin that right back. And then that's us. You can see that's uh, all, all nicely welded there. Okay, and it's ready to be. Now you can cut this in various ways. Um, that's still a little bit warm there. So what we should be doing as well, or what we should have done while that was cooling in there, is this is an important bit. See how you've got the the green of the belt. Now if you left that over a period of time and you kept welding and welding and not cleaning the belt, that will eventually turn to carbon and turn black, burnt uh, TPU, which means then when you go to, two things happen. One, it insulates the temperature, so you don't quite get the proper temperature because you've got this insulating material in between if it's really caked. But the other thing is that it'll end up polluting the joint with bits of burnt TPU. So always keep the blade immaculately clean. Always keep it clean. And you can do that while you're waiting for your, your joint to cool cool down. There we are. I'm not entirely sure whether that's the, the best material to use, but it's not leaving anything on the, on the iron. So one thing I didn't tell you about, and I should have told you, is when you plug the iron in, you've got a, a red uh, indicator there. Now when it's solid like that, that is up to temperature. But if you see it flashing, it means that the iron has dropped down in temperature. Um, you won't often see it because, as I've said earlier, the electronics in here keep the temperature uh, fairly constant. But if you are in a very cold environment and you're trying to weld something and it does flash, I'd leave it just to steady out uh, until it's uh, properly steady. So there you are. That's the, um, that's the joint. And what we're going to do now is um, we're going to still probably a bit warm we're going to trim trim this around with our side cutters and our craft knife now this craft knife I got isn't the sharpest I've seen some action so um, let's chop that off there like that so, and then using your using your craft knife and using a, a slicing action, you gently trim that like that. I don't know whether you can see that. No, I know I'm cutting towards me, and I always say never cut towards you. But I can honestly tell you, if you slice and um, you'll be. There we are. Okay. Well, you can see, you can see there. It's um, you can keep trimming it. And in fact, what I do sometimes, if I want a really immaculate job, I can melt. I can melt those sides on the iron and get them all looking really uh, ship shape and so forth. So, but I think I don't want to detain you too long on this so it'll give you an idea anyway there you can see you can see that there's the the shape of the join and what you would do as I say if you wanted to just give it a a little trim there and then if you wanted to you can always use the the iron to smooth it all off so there you are now here's the acid test if you're practicing with this and you want to make sure you've got the right join. The easiest and the best way to do it, to make sure you've done the job properly, is to cut the joint in two. And you can see where the, the Kevlar strands have now joined together. Um, so it's almost one. But most importantly, is that you shouldn't see any, any splits where those two haven't welded. That should be absolutely solid, which it is. Phew. <laughs> so you can see again, look, there's no, no splits. Now, if you, 
when I was driving that together, it would, before I used to do it, and I used to take it up to the line, I don't think I was getting sufficient pressure. So um, you can end up with actually a, a bit of a fissure or a, or a split, which isn't good, which means it hasn't welded properly. But that has, that's great. So there we are, that's all I can show you guys. Um, thank you very much um, for this stage. And uh, I'll hand you back to the studio, as they say. So, there we are. We've seen how we set up the tool and how we do a joint. And the upshot of all this is to uh, reduce downtime by producing joints that don't fail as often as perhaps they might have done in the past. You end up with belts that see the lifespan of the material. So there's not a lot more to say other than to invite you, if you have any other questions or queries of any type at all, you can either phone me um, on this number here, or you can email me on this email here, or you can even write me a letter if you like, that would be fine. Um, so there's not a lot more to be said other than thank you very much for watching and thank you for your time. And uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you.